Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and back for another weekly educational lecture. This week's topic, guys, is a very, very important one. Um, I know I say that every week, but they just all seem to be really important. On uh, this week's topic, guys, I'm gonna be talking about win-loss ratios, batting average, uh, and I'm gonna be using a lot of different charts in here so that you guys can see just how important these two things are when they are put together. Separately and individually, they mean nothing, guys. And there's a mantra in this lecture that I talk about. You know, I've, uh, you can't go broke taking profits. It's BS, it's garbage. You absolutely unequivocally can and will go broke taking profits for most traders. In fact, that's how most traders do go broke because they take too small of a profit and too big of a loss. So I talk about that in this lecture. Uh, it's a very important topic, guys. And uh, you're also gonna see, guys, how much selling too soon matters, how much it really costs you. I do a breakdown, okay? We go over about a six trade review of real trades taken, and when somebody sells too soon versus sells at their target, okay, and how much it costs, not only on the six trades, but over the course of one month and over the course of one year. I'll give you a hint. Following your trading plan and not selling too soon would put you in the top 5% of all money earners in this country. Selling too soon, getting out too soon, will put you below the poverty line in the United States of America. Yes, it's that big of a gap. So you definitely wanna stick around and, and watch that, guys. It's very, very telling, it's eye-opening. So I talk a lot about batting average, a lot about uh, win-loss ratio, which is occasionally referred to as sharp ratio, even though they are not technically the same thing. Um, go over a lot of different charts. I even went over a few charts that clients have sent me recently. Um, so it's a very good lecture. It's about an hour long. It went a little longer than I expected, but a lot of quality information in there, guys, uh, and information that I believe can really take your trading to the next level because I think it applies to most traders. The selling too soon thing applies to most traders. And we talk about trade management a little bit in the video as well, how it's a give and take um, and it's all about expectation also. One other quick comment, guys, um, before we get to the video. Um, I, I got a few emails recently, people saying, I can't find those three bar plays you're talking about. I love the video, Jared, it's a great video. The three bar play is awesome, blah, 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 but I just can't find them. They're just not out there. Guys, stop, just stop. I scan dollar gainers and dollar losers and I find them every single day day. In fact, today there was one on INTC. I'll put it on the screen right now. Intel. How perfect is that three bar play? Just take a look at it. Stare at it. Wow, that's amazing. There was another one on SE today. Beautiful, right? There's another one on QCOM a couple days ago. Guys, they happen every day, all day. And I think you all agree, Intel is not some small little penny stock company you've never heard of. Qualcomm is not some small penny stock company you've never heard of. They happen every day. You just have to scan. If you're being lazy for scanning, that's on you. But three bar plays, four bar plays happen every single day. There was one on NIO, NIO yesterday, four bar play. I put that one out. I'll put that on the screen. I put that one out also on stock twits. So follow me on stock twits as well. I put a lot of those ideas out there. It's uh, at Scoutmaster is my handle. But I just don't want to hear that, guys. It's just you have to be scanning. Like Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, right? Always be closing. Well, ABS, always be scanning. Okay, first place is a new BMW, second place is a set of steak knives. That's the difference in trading. Scanning gets you the BMW, not scanning, set of steak knives. Okay, not meant to be funny actually because it's the truth. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture on batting average, win-loss ratio, and how it really truly impacts um, your bottom line P&L, especially when you sell too soon. Um, don't forget, guys, you can get a $1 30-day trial into the Live Traders chat room um, by clicking the link in the description. $1 for 30 days, guys. We also have an open house coming up next week, so you want to check that out, too. I'm Jared Wesley, guys. Don't forget, crush that like button, guys. Hit that subscribe button, all right? Have a good one, guys, and I'll see you guys again next week. Take care. So this week's lecture is called Batting Average Doesn't Matter, but Win-Loss Ratio Does. Um, it's a little bit of a sarcastic type of a title. 
um, because we're going to see here shortly that realistically neither of them matter and realistically both of them matter. Um, so, like I said, the title is a little bit sarcastic. Uh, it's a topic that I think a lot of you uh, don't consider. Um, and I think Unwall talked about it in the weekly swing trading newsletter video um, this week a little bit. But I'm going to go into great detail about it because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding um, out there with regard to batting average, uh, with regard to win-loss ratio, what it is. Some people refer to win-loss ratio as sharp ratio, even though technically they're different things, but a lot of people refer to them as the same. Um, so with that, let's kind of dig in and just and, and talk about this for a second. Um, and uh, this one, I think I'm going to go a little bit um, with audience participation this week, okay, from you guys. Uh, so, uh, you know, get your keyboards ready. Um, before I do, though, this is a phrase that I'm hearing a lot recently. I mean, I've been hearing it for 15 years, but this recently is just, I don't know, it's like a popular mantra. You can't go broke taking profits. Um, yeah, that's the biggest bullshit I've ever heard in my life. Okay, that's precisely how many, 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 many traders do go broke. Okay, most of you guys, and we're going to talk about this in a few minutes with regard to selling too soon, and that's going to relate to batting average and win loss ratio. So I'm going to tie it all in. Don't worry about that. Um, but a lot of you guys are not making money because you are taking profits too soon. All right. So, yes, there, there's a couple kinds of traders, right? There's the traders that don't take stop losses and they lose because, well, their losses are just so big. Um, that they can't recover from. And then there's the other types of traders which do take stop losses, but they sell too soon. They nickel and dime all of their trades. And in doing so, they go broke. It's like the death of a thousand paper cuts, right? Uh, and somebody just said it, right? So literally that that is a common problem in this business. So you can't go broke taking profits is one of the most ridiculous comments I've ever heard in trading. And we're gonna see here today how you can go broke taking profits or at least be a long term break even trader by taking profits too soon. OK, so this ties into everything I'm going to be talking about. But that's a comment or a phrase that I hear frequently. And I just don't want people. I just just stop saying it because it's ridiculous. It's just completely false. All right. So here we go. Does batting average really matter? OK, does batting average really matter? Well, Yes and no, okay, that, that's the simple answer to this. Batting average does matter, but it doesn't matter in which the way you think that it does, okay? So I'm gonna hold off on that in, in a second because I'm gonna get to a slide uh, where we talk a little bit about batting average. Um, so let's do the simple math. I know most of you guys are not idiots. Most of you guys are pretty bright people and you know what a batting average is, right? Uh, it, you take your average um, or your number of winning trades divided by your total number of trades, right? So this is just simple math just to get you guys thinking. So if you had 50 total trades, right? And you had 30 winners and you had 20 losers, you would have a 60% batting average, right? If a baseball player, you know, hits three out of 10, they have a 300 batting average. Well, batting average is pretty simple to figure out, okay? So 50 total trades, 30 winners, 20 losers, 60% batting. You guys got that. That's easy. Now the question then becomes, is a 60% batting average good? This is where I'd like a little bit of audience participation. You guys out there, I want you to think about this. Is, and I'd like you to reply, is a 60% batting average good? Yes or no? What do you guys think? Is a 60% batting average good? I'm getting yes, yes, oh yes, 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 depends, yes, 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 yes. It depends, yes, yes. Most people are saying yes to start, and then the second group of people are saying it depends, not on its own. It depends, it depends, it depends. So here's the, here's the answer to the question. The first 10 people who answered yes, 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 you must be new traders, okay? Because everybody else who then, then the other 50 or 80 people that just answered it depends, you guys have been trading for a little while. You know your ass from a hole in the wall. It depends, that's the answer. It's neither good nor bad, it depends. Sometimes a 60% batting average is horrible, absolutely unequivocally terrible. And sometimes a 60% batting average is rock star, like straight up baller, okay? One of them allows you to drive a Ferrari and the other one you can't even afford an old Ford Pinto. But they're both 60%. So what gives? How can, how can the same batting average in one scenario be Ferrari level good and in another scenario be 
barely, you know, Honda Civic or Ford Pinto level good? That's the $64,000 question. And that's what we're going to answer on the next slide. Okay, so 60% batting average, neither good nor bad. It depends. And let's find out what it depends on. It depends on your win-loss ratio. Okay, your win-loss ratio is basically the average size of a winning trade. It's the average size of a winning trade divided by the average size of a losing trade. Okay, so I here's a little, you know, thing for you here. Winning trades. So let's just say you had four winning trades. There were 170 bucks, 700 bucks, 30 bucks, 300. Bucks. Those are your four winning trades, okay? And then you have losing trades. etc. So you have five losing trades and four winning trades. How many doesn't matter? Because we're talking about the average. So how many is irrelevant? You could have 100 winning trades and three losing trades, but how many isn't the issue here. It's the average. So if you take a look at the average winning trade in this scenario, it's 300 bucks. Why? 170 plus 700, plus 30, plus 300 is 1,200. Divided by four is 300. So the size in this case of your average winning trade is $300, okay? Your average losing trade is $193. If you add 350, 400, 50, 75, and 90, it's $965. Five trades, it's $193, okay? So 300 average winning trade, average losing trade is 193. So your sharp ratio in or win loss ratio. I don't really want to refer to it as sharp ratio, guys, because it's not accurate. But for some reason, the trading industry refers win loss ratio as sharp ratio. So win loss ratio in this case is 1.554, right? So 300 divided by 193 is 1.554. So the question then is, is a 1.55 win loss ratio good? What do you guys think? Is a 1.55 win-loss ratio good? Yes or no? Is this good? Chana says no. Pradeep says yes, then yes, then yes. It depends. Yes, good enough, says Larry. Dominic says yes, depends. No idea, it depends. Good enough, it depends. It depends. And a slew more people, okay? Somebody says it's profitable. It depends. Guys, it's neither good nor bad. In one scenario, have we heard this before somewhere? In one scenario, a 1.55 win-loss ratio is rock star. It's Ferrari level rock star. In another scenario, a 1.55 win-loss ratio is Ford Pinto status. It's It's like Groundhog's Day. It's like deja vu. It's like, are we on the same slide that we just were a second ago? No, because the fact of the matter is in a vacuum, Batting average is worthless, and in a vacuum, win-loss ratio is worthless, okay? It's absolutely worthless. Now, we could talk about expectancy, 0.2, 0.3, 0.5, 0.7, 1.0. That's different, but I'm not going to talk about expectancy today because I think that topic, one, is a little bit more advanced, but two, comes after learning this. So you guys are going, wait a second, if batting average is worthless and win-loss ratio is worthless, then what are we even talking about? No, they're worthless by themselves, but they mean everything when you put them together. They mean everything when you put them together. So guys, let me ask you a question. If you win, if your average winner is 1.5 times bigger than your average loser, right? If your average winner is 1.5 times bigger than your average loser, but you only win 20% of your trades. How much money are you making if you only win 20% of your trades? You're losing money and you're losing money hand over fist. If you win two trades, that means you made three to one, right? Two times 1.5 is three. So you made three times your risk on that. If you lost eight trades, you lost minus eight. So you won plus three, but you lost minus eight. Net, net, you're minus five, minus five. So for all of you who said 1.55 win-loss ratio is good, you're wrong. It's not good in in a vacuum. For all of you who said a 60% batting average is good, you're wrong. It's not good in a vacuum. But what happens 
when we put them together. That's what matters when we put them together. So now I have another question for you guys, okay? What's more profitable? A 50% batting average with a 2.0 win-loss ratio or a 60% batting average with a 1.5 win-loss? Which is better? Which is more profitable? Which makes more money? Please comment. I'd love to, I would love to hear the comments. Alessandro says 50%. Anthony says the former, which is 50%. Vance says 50%. Okay, I'm not going to answer Malachi's. The first one says Aguardo. Jeanette says I, number one, which is 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%. There's, there's literally two or three of you out of, I don't know, 10 or 20 answers that have, that have not guessed 50%. Everybody is guessing 50%. Every single person, 90% of you, not everybody. There are a few of you that didn't. There are a few who didn't. But the general consensus it, people are saying 50%. 50%. You guys are not very good at math, are you? Trading has a lot to do with math, doesn't it? Guys, what are they really? Let's do the math. Well, let's get an answer. The math don't lie. The math doesn't lie. So a 50% batting average with a 2.0 win-loss ratio. Well, let's do 10 trades just to do the math. So if you had five winners and five losers, that's 50%, right? Five winners and five losers. So on your five winners, you're making 10 R. For those of you that don't know what R is, it means risk. It's how much money you're risking per trade. So it could be, a, call it $100. That means if you risk $100 on a trade, okay, and you lose, you lost $100. If you win, you win $200, okay? You win $200, right, because we're making two times our loss, right? 2.0 win-loss ratio. What this basically means is your wins are two times bigger than your losses. So our five winners will make 10 to one, 10 R, right? Five times two is 10. Our losers will lose five. Five times one is five. So in this scenario, after 10 trades, you'd make what? Five R. Your winners made 10, your losers lost five, 10 minus five is five. Okay, cool. 60% batting average with a 1.5 win-loss ratio is the same damn thing. Six winners times 1.5 is nine. Minus four losers is, wait, it's five. So now what does this tell us? It tells us that everything is a give and take. You can have an 80% batting average, but if your win-loss ratio is like 0.5, you're probably not going to make much money. You can have a 30% batting average. If your win-loss ratio is 4.0, you're going to make a boatload of money. It's a give and take. The higher the batting average, the lower the sharp or the lower the win-loss ratio needs to be. The lower the batting average, the higher the win-loss ratio needs to be. Does that make sense? So here is it in layman's terms. The more you win, right? The more often that you win, the less you need to win each time. The less often that you win, the fewer times that you win, you have to win more when you win. Does that make sense? So think of it like this in basketball. A good player shoots 50%, right? A good basketball player shoots 50%. But if you shot 40% from three-point range, versus 50% from two point range, they're kind of the same thing. I haven't done the exact math in my head, but does that make sense? Because you're getting more three points versus two points, you don't have to win as often. You can win less often to get the same result. So what I'm trying to tell you here is there's a lot of different ways to slice your trading. You don't have to have a 70% batting average to do well. You can have a 35% batting average and be extremely profitable. But you could also have a 70% batting average and lose money. Okay? So you have to understand, and we're going to get to this a little later, what works best for you. What works best for you? I'm going to talk more about this in a few minutes. I'm going to come back, circle the wagons, and I'm going to come back to this. Now, the one thing you don't want before I move on past this slide is this. We're assuming... We're making an assumption here, guys. And the assumption that we're making is that when we say 2.0, you're actually getting 2R. 
right? We're, we're assuming that 1.5 means your winners are actually 1.5, meaning if you're risking $100 and I say your win-loss ratio is 1.5, I'm assuming your average winner is $150, right? $100 times 1.5 is 150. What if, what if it's the opposite? What if your average winner is only $100, but your average loser is only $66 or $65? Now, your average winner is only one to one, but your win-loss ratio is 1.5. Now, I know I lost a few people there. A few of you are going, I have no idea what you mean, Jared. So if your average winner, let's use the 2.0, the math is easier. If you're risking $100 and you make 200, that's great. That's a true 2.0, right? A true 2.0 win-loss ratio. But what if you're risking $100, but your average winner is 100 and your average loser is 50? It's not the same. You're not gonna, you're not gonna make 5R in that scenario. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Some of you, I'm probably lost on that. But when I'm talking about win-loss ratio, I'm making an assumption that the average winner is a multiple of your R. So if you're risking 100, 2.0 means you make 200. If you're risking 100 down here and you make 1.5, I'm assuming you make 150. You don't want your average winner to be less than an R, okay? Now, let's take a look at some charts, okay? because I know you guys love charts. We've got to have charts, got to have charts, got to have charts, okay? So we're going to do an assumption here. What we're doing is this. I'm going to take a trader. We'll call him Trader X, okay? And we're going to go on Trader X over six trades, which is a very small sample size, but that's not the point. And this trader is risking $500 per trade, and this trader is doing 2R all or nothing. Those are the only two things that really matter here. $500 risk per trade and two R all or nothing trade management. Okay, so now let's take a look. What we have are six trades here. Trading plan is two R all or nothing. Trading plan is, I made that clear in pink, okay? So trade one, you take a buy setup. Pretty nice play, right? You saw this chart last week, actually. I think I put it in last week's lecture. 49.50 is the entry, maybe 49.25, 49.20 is the stop loss. Okay, it's a buy setup. Pretty obvious pattern. There's nothing wrong with the pattern. We're not, we're not talking about pattern right now. We're talking about batting average, sharp ratio, win-loss ratio, okay? We're gonna tie this all in. So buy setup, got out for a 1R gain at 49.75. No reason, just maybe the trader saw the prior pivot high, they got nervous when it started to chop around right in here, right? Went up to this prior pivot, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna hold for my 2R. I know I need like 50 bucks out of this, but man, it just keeps chopping, it's pulling back. It's, you know what, I can't take it anymore. <gasps> I'm gonna get out, right? Because all this chopping around, what? Got to them, it got to their head, it messed with them. So they got out. So they made $500 on this. They made one to one. They're risking $500, they made 500. But their trading plan actually made what? Two to one, because that's the goal. The goal here is two R, two to one. Two to one in this case is $1,000. 500 times two is 1,000. Well, this trade went to 50 bucks, which is two to one. Went much higher than that, actually. So did they follow their plan? Nope. What was the result versus their TP, which is trading plan? TP means trading plan. They lost $500 versus their trading plan. Their trading plan made $500 more than they did. Okay, so not a good start. You're behind your trading plan by 500 bucks on the very first trade. Okay, next trade, trade number two. Another beautiful buy setup. Lower high, lower high, lower high. Right here at minor price support, bottoming tail, doji bar, rising moving average, 50% retracement. I mean, my goodness gracious, what a nice play. In fact, it's very similar to this trade. Well, that's good. The traders has some level of consistency with the patterns they're taking. So we can't deny so far this trader is taking quality patterns. That's good, okay? They're taking quality entries with quality stop losses. So far, so good. The management is where this trader gets mucked up a little bit. So $54 is the entry. Remember the target's two to one, stop loss is like 50 cents. So you need like 55 for your target. Got full 2R target, made 1,000. Trading plan made 1,000. Followed the plan, yes. Result versus the plan, the same. That is what every trade should be. 
At the bottom, it should say same. I got the same as my trading plan because you're actually following it. So whatever reason, this time the trader got nervous to the left here and sold too soon. Over here, a similar scenario happened, but this time they held, right? Maybe they watched Top Gun, right? The end there and said, I'm not leaving my wingman. I'm going to hold on. They did the right thing here. So after two trades, the trader is $500 behind their plan. Let's move on. Now we go to trade three and trade four. So now we have a little bit of a breakout, right? Stock rips higher above resistance and then starts to consolidate in a very tight manner, okay? This stock moved higher, right? We had about a 20 cent stop loss, needed 1940, and then this happened. We've all been there, it's happened to all of us. You're moving up, things are looking good in the world, you're like, sweet, I'm almost at one to one, I'm gonna get my two to one, I'm rip, and it comes right down about three or four pennies below your stop loss, completely shook you out for a full stop with slippage. Okay, a full stop out with slippage because slippage is reality. All right, anybody on the internet that doesn't talk about slippage, run away, run as fast as you can. All right, so we're risking $500, but we lost 600. Why? We lost an extra 0.2R, okay? An extra 0.2R, so we lost 600 bucks. Trading plan, lost 600 bucks. Did you follow it? Yup. So you're the same as the plan. Guess what? Shit happens. There's nothing you could do about this. You did everything right. You got in at the right plot, spot. You had your stop loss at the right spot. You did everything right and this bar just got you. Now, this would have been a great area for, wait for it, the 84% rule, wouldn't it? This would have been a fantastic trade for the 84% rule, it would have worked. But in this particular scenario, you stopped out with slippage. But you followed your plan. Good. Trade four, another breakout, right? Consolidating, consolidating at the $260 mark back towards the rising moving average and you get in, okay? You get in. And then what happens after you get in? Chop, 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 chop. For like ever, this damn thing chops. It just chops around and chops around and chops around. I mean, you have a wide stop loss here, probably a $10 stop loss. So you need about 280 for your target, right? So you have a $10 stop loss here. And this red bar scares the bejeebies out of you, right? You're moving on up. Things are looking good. You're right around like 268. And then, oh my goodness, what happens? So what happens? As soon as the thing starts gaining a little bit, you're like, you know what? I'm going to hold. Oh, there it is again. Two red bars. So you've not only sat through one of these. And remember, you're remembering this shakeout from the previous trade. You're like, remember that last shakeout? And then this red bar comes and you're remembering what happened before. So when it comes back up and it happens again, you're like, you know what, screw this. I don't need to be in this damn thing. This thing is te looking terrible, which honestly it is looking pretty bad. So you get out for a half hour gain. You get out for a $250 gain because it's too choppy for you. You just can't handle it. But guess what? Your trading plan doesn't let you get out. It's all or nothing. You chose that. It's all or nothing. And guess what happens? It ultimately works. Shook you once, pulled back twice, and you said, fool me once, right? You got me. Fool me twice, my bad. But you broke your plan again. You broke your plan again. So in this case, you didn't follow your plan, and it cost you $750. So your plan made 1000 bucks, two to one. You made 250 cost you 750 Okay? Now, the last trades, the last two trades of this, all right? We're just doing a six trade trial here. Now we have two three bar plays. Note, I did this on purpose. Buy setups, breakouts, three bar plays. Why? Because those are the three patterns I trade the most. But anyway, we have a wide range bar, a narrow range bar, pops up at 9.40. Oh, we traded this a couple of days ago, didn't we? You can see it, January 6th. Pulls back, stops us out. Guess what? This is another great example of the 84% rule. The 84% rule, had you gotten back in, would have worked again. But this, the point here is, you did nothing wrong, wide range bar, narrow range bar, and it moved higher and then stopped out. So what happened? Stopped out, followed your plan. So you lost 500, the trading plan lost 500. Did you follow your plan? Yes, it's the same. Great, no problem, no problem. Next, trade number six. This was what, yesterday? This happened yesterday, I was in it. Wide range bar, narrow range bar, it dropped. It went almost one R, but remember, we're doing two R all or nothing here. So you had a great trade here. 
just didn't work. Stopped out, lost an R. So I lost an R, you lost an R, we lost an R, whatever. Your trading plan lost an R. Follow the plan? Yep, same. So this is a good thing, okay? This is a good thing. You followed your plan. But now we're going to take a look at the results in totality, okay? So we took six trades. What happened? What was the result? This is the result. Trade one, we actually made 500 bucks. The trading plan made 1,000. We're minus 500 against the plan. Trade two, we made 1,000. The trading plan made 1,000. Trade three, we lost 600. The trading plan lost 600. Trade four, we made 250. The trading plan made 1,000. We're minus 750. The last two trades, we lost 500. Now, I want you to take note of something. I'm going to skip the subtotal and net total for a second. I want you to note, if we go down to batting average, we both batted 50%. 50, the batting average was the same, but the win-loss ratio was massively different. Over here, you had a 1.09 win-loss ratio, and over here, you had a 1.875 win-loss ratio. Why? Well, because of the slippage you took here. Otherwise, it would have been 2.0, but we took some slippage. That's reality. That's reality. You take slippage on things. So just note, the batting average is the same. Only the win-loss ratio changed. What was the dollar result of that win-loss ratio? What's the difference between 1.09 and 1.87? Uh, how about $1,250 different on only six trades? So you made $150. After fees, I called it $10 a trade, five in, five out. Yeah, some fees are free, but you get it. After fees, you made 90 bucks net. Over here, you made 1400 after fees. You netted 1340 on six trades. So you, you made a little less than three to one on your money, but it's only six trades. You both batted 50%. Now, what does this take me back to? This has been my personal experience. This has been my experience helping traders for 15 years. You know what my experience is? I have found that most traders follow their trading plan when they lose. It's when they win that they don't follow it. I'll repeat that because it's important. I have found that most traders follow their plan when they lose. They take their stops. It's when they win that they don't follow their plan. And if you'll notice just from this small sample size, how expensive it is. Now, you're thinking, okay, I gave up 1,250. Now I want you to multiply this by 10. They go, why, Jared? Why 10? Because that would be a trading month. 60 trades is about what I take in a month. 50 to 60 trades is about what I take in a month. I take about two to three trades a day on average. Recently, it's been a little less. So if you did this over the course of an entire month, you would have made $900 versus $13,400. So in this little scenario, it doesn't seem like it's a very big deal, does it? $1,300 versus $90. You're like, oh, okay, that sucks. I messed up today or two days in a row. What if you did it for an entire month? $900 is much lower than the poverty line in this country. 13,000 puts you in the top 5%. One puts you in the bottom 5%. One puts you in the top 5%. I'm going to repeat it one more time because it's not sinking into you guys. Grant, be patient, brother. Be patient. One of these puts you in the bottom 5 or 10% of money earners in this country. The other one puts you in the top 5 or 6% of money earners in this country. Okay. Grant, be patient, be patient. I can't go to that slide. We're not ready for it. Okay. We will extrapolate out over a year here shortly. We will. Okay. So I want to do one more small exercise here. One more small exercise. This is from, I don't know, a couple years back. All right. This was a day where Unmo and I took a lot of trades. All right. I think I took five and he took six. Okay. So 11 trades, which is a lot, a lot, okay? Nine winners and two losers. That's a hell of a batting average, right? 82% batting average is incredible. The sharp ratio wasn't great, but for that level of batting average, it was fantastic. I don't want to focus on this page. 
This page is irrelevant, okay? What I wanna focus on is the next one, okay? So this is a normal trade tracking spreadsheet, the one that comes with professional trading strategies. Okay, this is part of it, all right? Now take a look at this. This is the report that that, that, that spreadsheet spits out for you. It auto-populates this report for you. And this report's like, it's three times bigger than this. You just can't see the rest of it because it's not important. So one trading day, 11 trades, nine wins, two losers. Overall, 82% batting average with a 1.3 sharp, call it a win-loss ratio. 1.3 win-loss ratio is really pretty good. Longs were 10, shorts were one. Good, good, good. All this we could talk about on another day. Buy setups versus breakouts versus highs, etc. That's not the point. What I want to get down to is the bottom. I want to show you something. Jared, five trades. Unmall, six trades. Pretty close, right? One trade different. One trade different. I had an 80% batting average. Unmall had an 83% batting average. About the same, right? Pretty close. Pretty close, right? His sharp ratio was 1.8, which is absurd. For an 80% batting average, having a 1.8 sharp ratio is ridiculous. On that particular day, on that particular day, I had a 0.63 sharp ratio or win-loss ratio. So his win-loss ratio was three times bigger, right? So you're thinking, well, he, he probably made three times more money. Wrong. He made five times more money. I made $1,500 that day. He made almost 9,000. We batted the same. Our batting average was very, very close. But his win-loss ratio was so much bigger that his profitability, even though he took one more trade, but basically we took the same number of trades with basically the same batting average. And look at the difference in profitability, gross profit here. 1,564 versus 8,888. That's the difference between holding your trades to full target and getting out early. Now, in this particular day, I don't know if I broke my plan or not, right? I got 1.3 out of Guild, but 0.6 out of Intel, lost a full R here, right? The point is, is some of my trades probably stopped at break even. Unmost didn't, they, they went 2R all or nothing. So you either get 2R or you don't. You get 2R or you don't. Some of my trades, for example, here's a break even trade. Here's a 0.63R winner. I don't know if they worked or didn't work. Maybe I saved myself money, maybe I didn't. It's not the point. The point I'm simply making here is, your win loss ratio is very, very important. Your batting average is important. When they are put together, separately they're meaningless and utterly worthless, okay? And here's the crazy part. A 0.3 expectancy, I'm not gonna get into expectancy, is actually not bad. A 1.5 expectancy is obscene. Like this is not doable over the course of a couple months or a year. This is one trading day. I wanna be clear, this is one trading day, okay? If you had an 80% batting average with 1.8 sharp over the course of a year, you'd make millions of dollars, millions of dollars. That's how unsustainable it is. But the point I'm making here is we had the same batting average, but our win-loss ratio was grossly different. And guess what? The profit was grossly, grossly different. Okay. All right. Sexy chart break. Sexy chart break. I know you guys are... We can't go too long. It's like um, it's like nap time for kindergartners. So I, I'm gonna put in a sexy chart break, guys. Okay, here it is. I don't want you guys to lose focus here just looking at too many text slides, okay? All right, here we go. So this is QCOM, all right, from what? Four days ago, five days ago, all right? Wide range igniting bar, narrow range resting bar, narrow range resting bar, rip. Let's look at the daily chart on this. This thing gapped over this pivot and over this pivot. So this is perfect, right? You're gapping over this pivot and this pivot. We need to get above the pink line, and we did. You get a wide range bar, entry 94.10, stop 93.70. Why am I bringing this up? Because I forgot to bring this up the other day, all right? I brought this up in the chat room today, so might as well bring it up again. This is an email somebody sent me. They made 1300 bucks on this particular day. And I thought, if I'm gonna start sexy chart break time, this would be a good one, a good initial sexy chart break. I actually had a picture of Halle Berry from Swordfish in there, but I just, if I put this on YouTube, I just don't want them to, you know, 
license me, so to speak. So I had to take Hallie out of my picture. I apologize because, you know, Halle Berry and Swordfish is, it's a good look for her. Let's just put it that way. If you know the scene I'm referring to. Um, anyway, but back to seriousness. This was mentioned in the chat room. This was mentioned on stock twits. I just took a picture of it. Here's stock twits. Watch QCOM over 9410, three bar play. So all of you guys out there, okay, that say three bar plays, I don't ever find three bar plays. We found three of them today. Intel on a 10 minute chart today. SE on a 10 minute chart today, right? QCOM was a few days back. I mean, we find these things every single day. So I don't ever want to hear from you guys that you don't find three bar plays. If you're not finding them, you're simply not scanning, right? You're not pulling the Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, you know, always be selling. Well, no, always be scanning, okay? Always be closing, ABC, always be closing, always be scanning, okay? Wide bar, narrow bar, narrow bar, rip, four bar play here. This is from an actual trader in the room. They sent me an email. This is fantastic. I love seeing this stuff. Love it. All right. Sexy chart break time is over. Now, somebody had mentioned what would that look like over the course of a year? Remember when we brought this up, this slide up right here? And I said, wow, multiply this by 10. This one trading, they multiply that by 10 and that would be your month. $900 versus 13,000. Well, let's do it one more step bigger. Let's do it over the course of a year. Let's say that that six trade sample size happened to you over the course of a year. So month one, January, 900 bucks, February, 900 bucks. Mar now I understand guys, you're not gonna have the exact same P&L every month, I get it. I'm trying to show you the difference between selling too soon and being an idiot versus following your trading plan, okay? In one scenario, you make $160,000. In the other scenario, you make 10,000. Guys, just to put a little, it's not levity, it's reality. I wanna put some reality to this. I mean this for a second. I'm gonna get like hardcore serious. About 7%, I might be off by 1%, 6 to 8%. Let's call it 6 to 8%. About 6, per, six to 8% of money earners in the United States of America make over $100,000 per year. Not family, I'm talking about individuals, individual income. Six to eight percent of Americans make over a hundred thousand dollars per year. So if you made a hundred and sixty grand, you'd probably be in that five or six percent range. Top five percent. If you made ten thousand eight hundred dollars in one year, you would be below the poverty line. The poverty line's like 15, 17 grand, somewhere around there. Somebody will call me out on it, but it's in that 15 to 20 grand range. That's the poverty line, okay? 15 to $20,000 in America is the poverty line. The government designates you as actually poor, not enough to sustain yourself. Unless you're the Unabomber who lived in a shack for like $2,000 a year, outside of that, you cannot pay your bills and feed yourself. Over here, you're in the top 5% of all money earners in the country. Over here, you're below the poverty line. All over what? Being an idiot. Selling too soon. Batting average was the same. The number of trades was the same. Your win-loss ratio was where you really messed yourself up. See the difference? So if you don't think it makes a difference, I don't know what to tell you. Because the more trades you take, the bigger these numbers get. Extrapolated over two years, three years, four years. The numbers just grow. So if you don't think that this stuff matters, you have another thing coming. The only way you're going to make money with a 1.09 win-loss ratio is to pump up your batting average to about 70 to 75%. And you'll have about the same results. So to lower your win-loss ratio by 0.7 or 0.8, you have to pump up your batting average by 20 to 25 percentage points. It's really hard to do. It's really hard to do. So here's what you need to understand here, guys, okay? No matter what we do in trading, it's generally true in life also. It's generally true in life. It comes down to this. Everything's a give and take. Life's about balance. I'm not trying to put you into a mold. Let me explain. 
I'm not saying you have to have a 50% batting average with a 2.0 win-loss ratio. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is if you want to get out of trades early at 1R, 1.3R, 1.5R, your batting average has to be 60%, 65%, 70%. So you need to find a balance to what a positive batting average and win-loss ratio looks like for you, for your time constraints, your personality constraints, your intangibles, things you're good at, things you're not good at. Because guys, you can't have it both ways. The tighter you manage, the more profit you are protecting. But you also have a greater chance of being stopped out at that particular level. Why? Because you're giving the stock less room. The less room you give a trade to wiggle, the more likely you get tagged at that level. A great example is NVIDIA today. I raised my stop up. I got tagged. NVIDIA went $3 higher. I made 700 bucks. I should have made 1,000. I followed my plan because guess what? I got 90% of my target, so I raised my stop. But the tighter I got, I protected more, but I also gave up future potential. The looser you manage, the larger the targets you will reach, but you will potentially give back gains. Why? Because you're protecting less. So if you get into a trade and you don't raise your stop loss and that trades up three or $4, guess what? All $3, all $4 are at risk. If you raise your stop loss, maybe you protect two of those $3. So you've protected two bucks out of three. That's, that's good, but you also have a higher chance of getting tagged. So if it comes down and tags you for a $2 gain and then it goes up $5, that wasn't a good trade-off. Over here, you might be up $3, but you have zero protected. It might come all the way back down and stop you out. But you also have the potential it goes up five or six more dollars. Do you understand what I'm getting? It's a give and take. Management is always a give and take. And management is always about expectation. Guys... You cannot manage on a one minute chart and expect huge winners. Guys, you cannot manage on a 60 minute chart and expect to protect everything. Can't do it. The goal, balance. Find out what batting average and win loss ratio works best for you. For me, I find that a slightly higher batting average, maybe low 50s, 53, 55%, with a slightly lower win-loss ratio works better for me. 1.5 to 1.7 win-loss ratio. 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. .1 That's me. I like to protect a little bit. So I err on the protection side. I don't err on the large target side. That's a personality flaw for me. But I've learned what my personality flaw is, and I've learned to what? Maximize it. I've learned to maximize my trading within my personality style. And how do we know this? Behavior. Behavior is what your personality will be manifested in. So go and trade. Meaning the only way you'll know this is if you go out and trade. Go out and trade. Trade for a month, trade for two months, and see and track the data and go, wow, what does this look like in reality? Not what I hope to do, not what I think I'll do, what I actually do. And then make some tweaks and adjustments, okay? Does this make sense? I hope so, because everything's about expectation. I don't go into a trade expecting to get five to one winners. Why? Because I know I won't get that because I'm not patient enough for it. I don't manage loose enough to get that expectation. So what do I do? I look for smaller targets with tighter management. My expectation is tighter management, smaller targets. That's a reasonable expectation. What is not a reasonable expectation is bigger targets with tighter management. That's not reasonable. Get what I'm saying? It's a give and take. All right, now, a couple more slides, call it a day. So I want you to think about what we just talked about. Let me bring it up just real quick, just, just to make you remember it. 160 grand in our scenario versus 10 grand, okay? 16 times more money, all right. Think about this for a second. Burn those numbers into your head. And then remember this, it's your choice. It's always your choice. You can have one of two things, frustration and failure, 
or success and happiness. Knowing you left money on the table or perhaps losing on a trade that you should have profited from, that's frustrating. You didn't follow your plan, that's frustrating. Knowing your trades produce good results, but being unable to see them through to their targets. This was me in my first year of trading. I got the patterns relatively quickly. Relatively quickly, I learned the patterns. I was a horrible trade manager. I'm still not a great trade manager, but at least I see them through to their targets most of the time. That's frustration at its finest. What will eventually happen? Your business will simply fail. That's it. There's no other way to say it. Your business will fail, okay? If you do this long enough, three things will happen. You'll either draw down your account to a level that's unsustainable and you'll have to, and you'll have to quit, period. You'll either, you'll do it quickly or you'll be a death of a thousand paper cuts and you'll be forced to quit, okay? Or you'll quit out of frustration and join the legions of failed traders with all the excuses why it didn't work. And guys, I wanna be very clear about this, super clear. You might quit, not because you're losing money. You might quit because you can't make enough money. Like 10 grand a year is not enough to live on. Sure, if it's a part-time thing, great, good for you. But if you're looking to do this for a living, feed the family, feed the wife and kids, 10 grand ain't gonna cut it, right? So you might have to quit just because of that. Or there's a third option. You hit the wall and you finally begin the process of change. And it's a challenging process. So I'm not here to tell you that this is some Nike commercial because it's not. You know what I'm talking about. Just do it. It doesn't work that way in trading. Behavioral things never work that way. When you think about people that quit smoking, vast majority of them don't quit cold turkey. There's a percentage that do. Most of them, it takes a little bit of time of weaning themselves off of things. Very few people quit anything cold turkey. It does happen. It does. But most people, it's a process of change. It's a timely process of change. It's a challenging process of change. It's a frustrating process of change. We are not robots. We don't plug USB ports into our heads and just upload a new program. We have to deprogram ourselves and it takes time. But that's where knowing what the problem is is half the battle and then making small adjustments until you get there, okay? So ask yourself these things. How am I gonna hit the goals? Will I swing trade, core trade, intraday trade, okay? What stocks am I gonna trade? What's my universe gonna be? I'm gonna trade NASDAQ stocks, New York track stocks. Am I gonna trade ADRs? Am I gonna trade ETFs? What patterns will I trade? Breakouts, buy setups, three bar plays. If you're an intraday trader, what hours will I trade? Will I trade the open? Will I trade the close? Will I trade lunchtime? Have I really thought this through in detail? Meaning, what do I need to pay my bills? So $500 a day is $10,000 a month or 120 grand a year. Okay, how do I get that though, right? How do I get that? So let me give you an example. If I or you or whomever has a 50% batting average with a 2R average winner and a 1R average loser, all right, including commissions, fees, whatever, you take three trades a day, it's 20 trades, that's 60 trades a month. If your batting average is 50%, that's 30 winners versus 30 losers. Your winners make 60R, your losers lose 30R. Your net gain for the month is 30R, but you gotta take out fees and everything. It's probably 25R. I think that's a little bit on the high side. Why? Slippage, fees, right? Your average winner might be 2R, but your average loser won't be 1R. It's gonna be more than 1R because of slippage, right? Occasionally, your average winner might be a little less than 2R because of slippage getting filled late. So realistically, we can take a good 20, 30% off this, probably 20 to 25R. So what has to happen? in order to make $10,000 a month, given these factors. You need to risk about $330 a trade, right? And again, that's assuming 30R, but I'm telling you 20 to 25. So realistically, you have to risk about four to $500 a trade to make about 120 grand a year, realistically. Now I'm gonna bust some of your bubble, and now you're gonna all go running for the fences, running for the hills and go, oh, I'm quitting, Jared, I'm quitting. You, you, you. Guess what? 1% is the max you should ever risk on a trade. So to risk four to $500 on a trade, guess how much money you need? 40 to $50,000 account. But if you had a $40,000 account, you made 120 grand a year, that's 300%. Warren Buffett envies you, 300%. And imagine if you did that for two or three years in a row, 
you wouldn't have a $40,000 account. You'd have a $140,000 account and you'd still be able to live. But you have to take this stuff seriously. This isn't a joke, man. Win-loss ratio matters. Batting average matters. Knowing what is required. Remember we talked about, uh, I'm not going to get into it today. I'll be here for another two hours. Remember we talked about process goals versus outcome goals? You guys all have an outcome goal. I want to make 100 grand a year trading. I want to do it in my pajamas in 30 seconds a day. Great. What's the process? How do you get there? Okay. It's a very metric dependent business. Very much so. All right, guys. Sexy chart break. Woo! Let's do it again. What do we have here? Wide range bar followed by a narrow range bar with a bottoming tail and another narrow range bar with a bottoming tail. Rip NIO from yesterday. Okay. Wow. This is another email. Happens to be the same person. Back to back, they just killed it. And I put it out there on stock twits again. I, I messed up on the number. It should be a four. I was just typing quickly. Watch the 15 minute NIO over 380. It should be 480. You can clearly see that on the chart, but there's a topping tail at 387, careful. Another 1,389 bucks. NIO, there it is. BYND, which we also traded. Beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful taking a perfect pattern and getting a perfect result? Because they don't always treat us that way. Baidu the other day stopped us out. But it's beautiful when you can take a perfect pattern and get a perfect result from it. Okay? And I love it even more when this happens and people email me with their real fills, in their real accounts, not their fake accounts, okay? And I love it, it's fantastic, why? Because it knows, that I, it makes me feel good because it's sinking in, right? It's sinking in, love it. And you know what's even better about all this? Check this out, guys, $1,389.27, $5.14 in commissions. <laughs> you gotta love trading in 2020. If this was trading in 1994, you could put like two zeros behind those commissions. Literally, I'm not joking. You would have been paying like $25 in and $25 out. Easy. Sometimes up to $50 in and $50 out. You got to love 2020. You guys don't know how good you have it. Everyone complains about high frequency trading. Screw that. They don't, they don't affect you that much. $5 in trade fees? Come on. That's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. And the, the tightest spread you could get was a teeny, which was, I think, was it was an eighth or a sixteenth um, back then. Now you can get penny spreads. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yep. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this sexy chart break. Back to reality for a second. Have you really thought it through? Okay? Because you know what? That really does make a difference in your life. It's life-changing the difference between 10 grand and 160 grand. And guess what? Nothing changed on this chart, guys. Nothing changed on this chart. You know what changed? Your itchy trigger finger on the mouse. Your itchy trigger finger changed. The chart's the same. Guess what on this slide? The chart's the same, okay? On the last slide here, the chart's the same. Nothing changed on any of these charts. The only difference changed is you. Expand your paradigm. Once you have expanded your paradigm, you can never regain the original shape in a good way. Once you start following your trading plan and seeing what batting average and win-loss ratio can do for you, you'll never go back to the old person you used to be, and that's a good thing. Okay? Take this stuff to heart. All right? So that'll do it for this week's lecture, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys learned a little bit from it. I do take this stuff pretty seriously. Why? Because it's a serious business. And if you don't, you, the market's going to eat you up and spit you out. Okay? So we'll do it again next week, okay? To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.